The tribe was a sorry sight, weak and insignificant. Worse for the hostages, the Blackfoot were at war with seven other tribes. They were heavily outnumbered and Salo recognized their defeat and subsequent demise was only a matter of time. Unwilling to sink with them, Salo decided to take certain steps. Objections from fellow follower Calhoun went unheard. After witnessing their lack of knowledge firsthand, Salo stepped in to teach the tribe how to properly maintain their firearms, how to properly shoot targets, and how to reload ammunition. The next step was teaching them how to manufacture explosives and drilling in small unit tactics. All based on books Caesar read as a young boy. He quickly impressed them enough to the point where he was made their acting war chief. Once they were ready, Salo led them against the Ridgers, their weakest enemy. Divide et impera, divide and conquer. When the tribe refused to surrender, he ordered every man, woman, and child killed. No exceptions were made. The Blackfoot moved on under Caesar's lead, surrounding the Kaibab's tribe. Upon their refusal to surrender, Salo took their envoy to the ruins of the Ridgers' village. The piles of corpses were a shocking sight to a tribesman who only knew tribal strife, played at war, with the occasional raid, raping, and pillaging. This was total warfare at its most destructive and barbaric state. The concept of total warfare was an entirely new and terrifying type of conflict that the tribes had never encountered before. Such brutality would form the core of the Legion's tactics and philosophy. The Kaibabs promptly surrendered rather than suffer the same fate, then the Fredonians, then all the remaining tribes. Caesar was acutely aware that the root cause of all the problems was tribal identities, leading to internecine conflict and preventing any substantial recovery. He knew what had to be done. He had to erase all traces of tribal identities and replace them with a single, monolithic culture. A year later, in 2247, when his confederation was large enough, Salo crowned himself as Caesar, leader of the great tribe, the Legion. He deliberately patterned it after the Roman Empire. One of the reasons was that this ancient, European culture was completely foreign, alien to the ignorant tribals he was subjugating. Caesar used the commentary as a blueprint after all, which a literate tribal would know that he was not the original Caesar, and his, Rome, was merely a copy of a civilization long gone. Second, he considered Rome's highly militarized autocracy adept at integrating conquered cultures the perfect template for a society that could adapt to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world and thrive, institution prosperity and peace, a new Pax Romana. The Legion would be a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, completely homogenous culture that would focus on long-term stability at all costs. He soon began putting his words into practice. Calhoun was sent away to the NCR as a messenger, and to warn them against interfering with Caesar's plans. While Calhoun was sent back to the followers to inform them of what he was doing, the other seven members of the expedition were murdered on the self-proclaimed emperor's orders. The newly christened Caesar formed his legion out of the tribes that had either been conquered or had chosen to capitulate to avoid total destruction. Joshua Graham would, however, ingrain himself in the legion as Caesar's right-hand man and became the legion's first legatus, in time becoming known as the Malpice Legate. In the decades that followed, the Legion secured holdings in both Utah and Colorado, while the entirety of Arizona and New Mexico were brought under its control. Tribes were forcibly assimilated into the Legion, while cities and their inhabitants lived on as subjects of the Legion. Since 2250, Caesar has styled himself as the Son of Mars, divinely ordained to subjugate the world to his will, and five years later he established his first capital in the ruins of Flagstaff. By 2274, he had conquered most of the tribes of Arizona, Colorado up to Denver, New Mexico and southeastern Utah, and became known as the conqueror of the 86 tribes, whose legion had never met any serious defeat until their confrontation with the NCR at the First Battle of Hoover Dam.